Hi guys, and um, welcome to the What's the Crack podcast. It is our first ever episode, and I'm sat here with Conzo, my good friend. 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 Oh, I can't wait to tell my mother. <laughs> so the podcast, in short, I'm just going to be interviewing, for the start anyway, for sure, I'm going to be interviewing people that I find interesting, people, friends, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so just be a little fly on the wall on our conversation. And also, Conzo has a really interesting life. And I'm I'm just genuinely so excited to find out more. That's about a weird way to say on. depression. Conzo has <laughs> depression. So if I was to ask you to give me the briefest synopsis of what you do, what would it be? What the? That's the hardest question to start. Yeah. Who, who the fuck is you? Yeah. Um. Okay. My name is uh Conzo. Uh, I moved to Scotland about five years ago from California after I got out of the Marines. Uh, I was originally going to school to be a veterinarian, but I started working in the third sector uh, with a horse rehabilitation center. Uh, they were not doing well financially. I have a butt that I was willing to sell online. Mm -hmm. I did that to pull them out of debt. Um. Then there was a moral call. Quorm, uh, and I resigned, and now I'm starting my own animal sanctuary uh, mm -hmm. in Scotland, Fife. Uh, it's going to be called Cumric, which is the Scottish uh, word for sanctuary or asylum. Really, really original, I'd say. Yeah. 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 I mean, that is a pretty... When you, when you, when you find <laughs> your name by going to Google Translate, then you know that's yeah. that's how you know you're doing it right. Yeah, 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 exactly. I can't pronounce it. How do you say it again? I'm not going to try because I don't think I did it right. And I can't do it twice. <laughs> no, with, fair. with my American accent, they'll kick me out of the country if I fuck this up. Because... I have a lot of questions for you just because and I, f I just find your life so interesting. So you grew up in California. That's what they know. Uh, so I was born in California, grew up in Hawaii, Colorado, Florida. So I'm in California. I was stationed in California and then I did two deployments. My last one being to Afghanistan. Wow. Um, and then I realized like, hey. I don't actually want to be here. Got out of the military. Uh, but the military does something where they pay for your education, which mm -hmm. is how they trick the poor people to die for the rich. It's really <laughs> classic. <laughs> classic capitalism. Classic, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was able to use that GI Bill to go to university in another country. And I saw this as my opportunity to escape. Trump just got voted into the office. They started building Ooh. a wall. I stepped over and ran. Okay, yeah. fair. Yeah. So why did you move around so much? Oh, that's our question. When you were younger, like, um, well, after after my 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 dad looked at me and said, "Never mind," and left. Oh. Uh, it was up to my mom, and you know, you know, when you're you're young with five sons, you travel, you follow five. your heart, yeah, you, you you do your thing. She was trying her best, as we all are, as we all yeah, trying our absolutely. Best. Hawaii seems pretty interesting. Yeah, it's super super expensive. Uh, as as a as a white dude uh, or Howley, it was a little bit <laughs> interesting as well. I really messed up when I was eighteen. I was like, oh, it's my father's culture. I'm gonna get you know a mm -hmm. Polynesian tattoo. Do not do that if you look like me. For the people not watching, <laughs> I am I'm pasty colored uh, with a beard. Like no, <laughs> just my milk that. skin tone. Yeah, at eighteen, I was like, this is gonna be the best idea of my life. Um, oh, I'm just gonna chop off my arm. Actually, I'm ashamed. So is your dad Polynesian? Yeah, his whole family is from there. Like my. My cousins, their names are like Tahani and Kalani, and like oh, wow. they're all very much larger than me. And it's, it's like, oh, here's Kalani, Tahani, and there's Connor. Oh, ha, ha, friends. <laughs> that's, that's I'm the, the little white kid. Yeah, so that that was my story. And then you know, I I got the opportunity to come to Scotland, and I just I just took it. I could not stay in the U.S. No, ever. But like, which is hard to say to you because you just brag about how much you. I love, love America because you're popular there. How, I just like you there. I just like being popular. Yeah, they they, they see they see a, a a redhead down the street. They start yelling, "Is that Janet? <laughs> Janet? Have you come to bless us?" I've always had the best time though. Yeah, I bet. I, but like everybody's always been so nice. I wonder why. Oh, I, I do wonder why. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because your your episode of the X Factor. For who don't know, I'm just gonna <laughs> oh, brag, you're just plugging me. Brag Thank about you. my friend. Uh, I think she was on TV or something. I forget. Uh, but anyway, so I hear. Yeah, yeah, so I heard you were yeah. also on TV. Oh lord, so we'll get to that later. Look at us celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> Two celebrities in a room. <laughs> May they shake hands. They might. They might. They... <laughs> Sorry, that was a TikTok reference. I do apologize, guys. Don't apologize. This is who you are. This is me. Yeah, we've made a thousand TikTok references today. This is very true. That was actually a Vine reference. So let the record show uh, Janet Devlin does not know her memes. Fake Vine. And she should be publicly shamed off the internet. Yeah. So I do have a massive question. How did you end up joining the military? Ooh, that is a hard Cause question. Because like I, I, I feel like you're one of the last people I could imagine being in the military. Do you want do you want the, the patriotic answer or the real answer? I wanna know your real answer and then I wanna know your fake answer for what you tell people. All right. 
Uh, let's do this then. So after being sexually abused for many years of my life, I was confused, lost. They took that as signs of depression and anger, and I was put on uh, Prozac at the age of 11 to 17. Mm. Uh, multiple suicide attempts later, I realized that the best way to die was to die like my brother because everyone talks about, oh, he's a hero, he served his country, he was doing the thing. And so I joined the infantry and the Marines, and my main goal was not not to survive. And I've, my, my, my last gift to my family was they could at least have some honor when they talk about it rather mm. than just some kid that hung himself in the garage, which was my plan. Um, yeah. Things did not go like that. My first, you know, experience with it all, you're like, actually, never mind. I quite like being alive. I like living. <laughs> I take it back, please. Yeah. Um, and then luckily nothing, nothing terribly too bad happened. And I learned a valuable life lesson. Uh, and I've also was able to get off the medication um, because you cannot take that in the military. So after oh really yeah five years of not being on it, I was like I can actually function pretty well with it without okay. it. So that's it was it was a it was a fun vacation, a fun little yeah. a fun little episode. You, you should ask for the patriotic answer. It'd be like because I'd be like America because America <laughs> <You can't laughs> guns see. and shit. People can't see. Uh, Conzo flexed his massive twenty nine inch. Is that too big? 20, <laughs> You're trying to measure your biceps. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, we, we successfully measured it, and we're going with twenty two inch biceps. People who aren't watching though, Conzo is a he's a muscly guy. Do, do you you are a muscly guy. You think I'm big? You have muscles. <laughs> oh, whoa, <laughs> oh, whoa, baby. <laughs> but I can't let you glaze over some of these things oh i never do i hope it's okay if i ask you some yeah, you're, like personal questions you're one of my best friends janet I'll, yeah i'll talk about anything with you i mean we do have to tell people later how we met because it's pretty funny and oh yeah no. yeah that story will <laughs> be coming more, up it's more makes me worry about you sometimes but yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know this is why all my friends think uh, am i okay <laughs> yeah, yeah the second you said okay we'll get into it later we'll get into it yeah, later yeah, yeah. but um it's a, it's a very serious thing though the, the childhood trauma yeah. Oh, isn't it? Doesn't it just make us so funny and handsome and, and fun? It definitely makes people funny. Yeah. Like, it's one of those things, again, where I, I, I don't know what a, a, a victim of that would look like, but I just... Honestly, there's there's so many ways that you can go from something like that. I've noticed in my experience with people that people either one become so much more compassionate after trauma like that because they have this port in their chest or like I feel that what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I felt that I can understand you or they lean on it for a crutch to not put in the work and, you know, change behaviors that aren't like socially acceptable. Mm -hmm. You can either have someone, you know, become the kindest person or when you try to pull them up on their bad behavior, they're like, oh, my, my dad hit me or, oh, this happened to me. So I'm not going to change. Here's yeah. my excuse. So that's my, that's how it kind of looks to me sometimes. When I meet mm -hmm. people who have that kind of trauma, it either becomes the debilitating thing that makes their life whatever they want it to, or they become like the nicest. Yeah, I do. Um, I want to know, this, is, this may be too personal. Absolutely. Feel free to tell me that. Um, was it like a family member or? Yep. Yeah, it was, uh, it was my uncle at the time. We went... Uh, unfortunately, because I did not tell anyone what happened to me because uh, I was told, I was shown that the grown-ups would not believe me. I was mm -hmm. you know, told it was just a game that I'm overreacting. He also sexually assaulted my brother. We later went to the police. Um, I don't know what happened with that. Um, the way... Yeah. The way that it happened to my brother was much more violent than it was to me. Mm. Um, and also, because of my worldly experiences, it's less of a main thing to me. So I was able to work through it easier. For mm. him, it's 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 debilitating, like yeah. I said. I, I, sometimes, I sometimes say, like, you know, I have so many scars and he has just this one. But then I realize, like you know, when the night is bright, it's like by many stars and his, his is just the fucking sun. It's like the mm. biggest thing in his life. So of course it's, it's, it's bringing him down. Of course. Yeah. You know? Like um, your therapy bill must be quite large. No, this is therapy now actually. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I mean, this I, is how I deal with my issues yeah, actually. I, I, I tell jokes yeah, and I, people laugh. <laughs> I yell at my phone at 3 a.m. And then I post it on the <laughs> internet and people clap for some reason. I mean, you are very open on TikTok. Of course, as we right. should be. Yeah, I, I also am very open on TikTok. Yes, we know. Yeah, we know. <laughs> um, But I love your openness. I love mm. your honesty. I love the fact that you're not afraid to talk about things that other people would be afraid to talk about. That's the thing about stigma. It stays where it is if we don't communicate, if we don't talk. Mm. You st If you feel alone and you feel like this outlier, this freak, this, you know, like you have something to be shameful for. What what, what the fuck do we have to be shameful for? Yeah. Just because somebody did something to you, you you have nothing to be ashamed. I, I hate using that word over and over. Mm. But you have nothing to be ashamed for. Like mm -hmm. you're a victim. You're, you're something happened to you. Yeah. Why, why hate yourself for it? 
No, definitely. It's just it's just such a, a, a god I just can't even imagine. Like, yeah. if if you're able to, I always say talk about it. Like that's all we can do mm-hmm. is communicate and let each other know we all have shared experiences. You're not alone. And yeah. Look at look at you. You could one day be a guy with a couple followers on TikTok and people. Tiki-talkie. Yeah, t- <laughs> keep people call Conzo Bonzo. I don't know. You could have the name. It's a stupid name. So, do you go to therapy? I did for a very long time. Um, during the military, you know, for PTSD, for uh, everything that's happened. Uh, then I got a mental health mentor. Uh, I go to couples therapy by myself, which is fun. Uh, they were very confused. I recommend that. Yeah, I've yeah. been to couples therapy on my own. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, you got to realize some days, like, your ideas of relationships are not perfect. Who taught you how to do a relationship? No one. You were just a horny teenager, and they're like, hey, fall in love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this will be fine, as they all laughed in the background. I find, like, because I went to a woman who normally does couples therapy but she does like a love based thing to help you look back at your past and your past relationships and n- notice those patterns of behavior and i find that, that was so useful mm-hmm. to have somebody show you like your family relationships what you witnessed as a child like what you fell into in your teenage years who you dated in those teenage years like how those relationships are and how they affect you do you feel like you have like unlearned a lot of the past behaviors that you used to have in relationships because like it's something I'm definitely working on Mm -hmm. I know that for sure like I'm trying to shed the layers of like the past relationships Mm -hmm. but like do you find that you've did you find any issues with the way you used to love people yeah and and tell you the truth most the issues of which the way I used to love probably came from the patriarchy from the toxic masculinity that we all are embedded with from a very young age because I never had uh, a view of a relationship with my my mom and a dad because I never had a dad, you know. Mm-hmm. So I everything I learned I learned from society telling me what a man should do, mm-hmm. um, and eventually I just come to realize like my inability to dive to those deeper levels of intimacy is not something to hold up and laugh about. It's a cripple. It's 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 taking away from a part of my life. Mm-hmm you're not able to love at a deeper level because you're not being vulnerable with your friends. You're not being truthful with yourself. You are hiding behind this false pers- like persona of what you think you should be. Mm-hmm. And the less time you spend there, the more time you come to know who you are. Yeah. And that's where you learn your boundaries. That's where you learn how to openly communicate with people. And it's just, it's been a very fun experience. Um, and I, I always recommend if you have the resources or the ability to just find someone to talk about things, even if it's not a big life changing trauma there are things in your life that you could you could talk to somebody about and get a lot of help with and it'd be nice it'd yeah be real fun no definitely i think like, there's definitely something i've i remember you saying and it stood out to me um it might have been on the tiktok but you were saying about how now you have guy friends oh my god where you never used to have guy friends i i've never felt comfortable in a group of guys uh mm. there's something about it that just makes me feel a bit gross like i have to pretend to be you know one of the bros which you know as you mm. can see I'm not, <laughs> um, but you know, I, and I also, but you look like one of the bros. Thank you. Do like, you know what I, like, maybe? like, like you, you're so strong and, and, and manly and handsome and handsome. Oh my goodness. You're so handsome. Everyone heard from the cat's mouth to self. <laughs> Conzo's but, handsome. Uh, you would never think that you would have issues, um, being friends with guys. Well, I mean, I, in the military, I had a few select friends. I, I kept most people at arm's distance. I didn't really trust men. I didn't really like the rhetoric of, um, how men interact with each other. Do you and think that might have come from childhood as well? Oh, of course, yeah. I've, I was always a bit of a loner. I never learned to fit in with like groups of guys. Mm-hmm. And even even now when I do, you you hear the sexist jokes that you know mm-hmm. are just accepted. And, and part of your head, you just want to reach out and be like, what do you mean by that? And yeah, like, that's the only way you can back backfire with those comments yeah. whenever people tell jokes that aren't appropriate. And you go, what do you mean by that? Yeah, just pull them up. Be like, because yeah. you're either going to find out that they will, one, say something sexist and then stick with it or to be like actually yeah no i didn't mean that that's it's just a joke man they'll get defensive no matter what yeah but now my group of friends are just the most the loving you know they they're very affectionate towards each other they're open with you know what they're struggling with and mm-hmm. it makes it so i can be affectionate i can be loving i can be open as well and i'm i'm just very grateful for them they're my they're my best treasure yeah i think it's it's important to have guy friends i think you know Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I find it like really interesting, like how you talk about men's issues and things like that, because it's definitely something that's not talked about a lot. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's what the the stigma of the patriarchy does to you. It makes yeah. you. It makes but you, you got to be aware, like people, when they hear the patriarchy, <gasps> I think a part of their bum clenches a little bit, and they're like, "I bet you people would turn off this podcast as soon as they heard the patriarchy mentioned." Well, they can also catch these hands. It on catch the way these out. hands. Oh. <laughs> because there are a lot of people that you know deny that it exists. Mm. They don't believe that it exists. I think like even part of myself, like I shy away from talking about those kinds of things mm. just for fear of like, I don't know, people being a bit like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the same time, like that's, uh, I guess, a normal reaction when you don't or you're not affected by it or you don't see how it affects you. Mm -hmm. But once you start to de de deep dive, uh, uh, sorry, one again, uh, when you try to actually dive deep into what happens from it, you start mm -hmm. to realize, OK, what the fuck's going on here? It's because all... it does hurt men. Oh, yeah, very much Just so. as much as it hurts women. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people hear people talk about the patriarchy and they think, oh, women complaining about men. This yeah. Here we go again, women complaining about men. But it's actually just as harmful to mm -hmm. men. And it's it's kind of funny because it's going to be the same people who are like, we men's mental health matters. But at the same time, they're like, shut up about the oppression you know, mm -hmm. and then shake their fists in the air. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. assuming. What do you think? So... What exactly is the patriarchy? I don't fucking know, tell you the truth. That's, yeah, me too. It's such a vague, and it's just, it is so hard to place your finger on, but you, you start to understand it enough to be like, okay, this is, uh, this is the effect from a male lead dominated society yeah. um, that is designed and profiting only, you know, certain groups of our society. Mm -hmm. And then you start to see how it's also hurting these members of society by these, these unrealist unrealistic expectations that are put on men mm -hmm. that you know once you feel like you are not living up to it then you feel like oh i'm less of a man i'm not what i'm supposed to be and then you also have these other men on alpha podcasts oh oh, oh um you know telling you what men should be and how you should act like them to be a real man and yeah. it's just that... it's really harmful at the minute yeah like you... it's trending on tiktok mm -hmm. Um, to, for people that don't know, it's a trend on TikTok right now to uh, take the mick out of male podcast hosts. Oh, yeah. Uh, because of how misogynistic they can sound sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not throwing that term lightly. I'm not saying misogyny lightly. I'm literally saying it because, like, I honestly think they hate women. No, and it's excuse, as, a, as an example, like, they're like, if my, if my woman does not have dinner at five o'clock, she is not, I am bringing in 16,000 a year working at Wendy's. How dare she? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, the audacity like it's like they call themselves high value males they think yeah. that women lose value as they have children or and partners yeah or like the more people you sleep with yeah the less you know they they use that key and lock analogy a lot yeah just tell me you don't know how a vagina works oh, that's fine yeah but... i it's it's honestly mind-blowing to me like i've been cussing and saying stuff a lot am i yeah you're okay to... oh thank god yeah absolutely <laughs> um it's chill um but yeah i just like because that that key and lock analogy isn't it like uh the key that opens many locks is a master key but mm -hmm. um if uh, a lock that's opened by many keys is a pretty bad lock and i think they snap back be like okay if we're going to uh relate people to uh inanimate yes. objects let's do a pencil and a pencil sharpener yeah then. like <laughs> you can you can throw it around and it's it's still just as stupid but I'm yeah. glad that we're able to point out the hypocr hypocrisy, 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 yeah. thank you, uh, in this. And just like, no, we're functioning humans. This isn't how sexuality works. This isn't how relationships yeah. work. This isn't how society should work to where there is one standard for one group of people and another for another. Like it just. Yeah. So I can't go the rest of this podcast without asking you a question. That is... You want to do this, Janet? Look <laughs> I, my fucking this. I really want to do it. Let go. You went on a notorious show. Notorious? It is a notorious show. Okay. Uh, here in the UK. Is it The X Factor? No. Oh, okay. It's more notorious. More respectable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's more respectable. I have to sell my show. soul. Yeah. Um, there's a show called Naked Attraction. <gasps> Oh no. oh no uh naked isn't the title for a very good reason you have because you to... lay yourself bare uh, yeah your heart, your heart is naked yeah like you're not just emotionally naked you're let's physically stop naked. beating around the bush because the nation saw Big. my bush you yeah know? they did yeah. <laughs> Swinging in the can i just say it was cold i was nervous uh i asked them to turn on the heating and they slapped me in the face they said you're a dirty bitch i was like you're right you're right daddy <laughs> for some reason that usually works it just made it smaller <laughs> i shrunk <laughs> uh, it went inward yeah <laughs> 
So cons are wet on the show called Naked Attraction where you uh, line up a bunch of people. They all have their kit off and it gradually goes up and up as the rounds go on. So a person gets eliminated each round and eventually you get to see two people and their faces and their whole body and they're facing you. Yes. And they get to see you for the first time. And you are also, you're not naked during that part. I'm not, no. So as, I, as we were just talking about how we should respect people, I am over here like a, a person buying, a, 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 you know, cattle at a, yeah. a slaughterhouse. <laughs> like, all right, show me the titters. Uh, so what made you, go, what, how did you even find that that show was tricked. going on? I got tricked. I'm not, I'm not going to beat around the, I'm not going to lie here. I, they posted in my uh, Facebook my uni's Facebook page, it was like overheard at the university, the, mm -hmm. the town and stuff. And that's where people always uh, advertise for their master courses, like if they need to do something. And I'm always kind of keeping an eye. I see, you know, like, oh, if something sounds fun or if I can help. And they said, is anyone looking for a new brave dating show? I was recently single and I was like, I can help you with that. Sure. I'm pretty brave. I've been yeah. to war. Yeah, I've done it. I'll do the thing again. <laughs> Who cares? And so I messaged them. They messaged me back. Um, you know, we have an hour long phone call. I am, uh, in my, my words, smashing it um, a little too good. And then at the end, they're like, oh, have you ever heard of Naked Attraction? I was like, yeah, you know, from time to time, I, I've not really seen much of it. And they're like, would you ever go on? I was like, um, maybe. And they're like, oh, because this is for Naked Attraction. I was like, you just started with that before I, just, I was seducing. I was charming, you know? Yeah, I should have laid off a little. Yeah, because now I've charmed. Now you want me. I've charmed too well. <laughs> <laughs> and so I became a picker rather than someone in a tube. So the, the episode okay. was about me. Yeah. Which was weird. Yeah, because I haven't watched it. Why not, Janet? Why not? Because I'm a bad friend. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. I, I've, how many shows of yours did I go to? You went to two of my... No, you three. went to three. I went to one by myself. I, I stood there in the crowd. And then all I said as I was running my taxi, goodbye, Janet. I'm always here to support you. I love you. Goodbye. I'll do anything for you. But Janet won't even watch my show. So I will explain. I did say to you earlier, the reason why I hadn't watched it was because I didn't know our boundary on that. Like, was it okay for me to watch it? Like, think, is think, it fine? I you think know? if I go on TV naked, that's just consent. <laughs> but that's I did it to myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I dick picked all my friends and you're one of my closest friends. Janet. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I actually might watch it. Oh, fuck. Now I'm getting nervous. Now you're nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just really curious now because like, yeah. I feel like everybody has seen it and I haven't. Well, you know, I am I was very scared because, you know, in those shows, they, they choose how they portray you. As oh, my you, as God, you, yes. I, I think maybe you know something. A wee like, bit of experience. I don't know. Well, let, me, let me walk you through it. Okay. <laughs> so when you go on TV, okay, as a man explaining okay, right. this. Right. Explain it to me. Oh, God, yeah. how do I put this in simple terms for your little woman mind? I know. Um, <laughs> okay. So... Yeah, I was very scared that they were going to portray me in some kind of like weirder way than I than I am. And they did at one point. They con oh, really? they completely misrepresented uh, me. Um, and the fact of they're asking me like, what is your like sexual kinks and stuff like that? And I in myself do what my partner likes. I, my my big thing is that my partner is enjoying it, then I'm enjoying it. Like Yeah, you get off on them getting off. Yeah, exactly. Like if you're into this, I'm into this and I'm loving this, like whatever that is. And I, I told them this uh, and they prompted me to tell the story because I told them over the interview. I was like, you know, I was with a person for uh, a couple of years who was really uh, interested in pegging. And oh, I, wow. I said, if you, if you want to do it. One sec, I'll... what's pegging? Okay. Uh, when uh, a... Uh, one partner wears a strap on and then penetrates the man. Uh, yes. That's the best way. So it's way the, almost just reversing the rules. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, some people see it as really, really like demasculating or anything like that. But I'm just saying if you are willing to do anything for your partner or if you're or at least whatever is in your boundaries. You, you took it up the butt for yeah. your partner. I mean, if you ask them to do it, you have to you have to at yeah, some yeah, point. Yeah. Like, OK, I'll take one for the team, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, the story was, you know. I had a partner who was interested in pegging, uh, and because they were interested in it, I was willing to do it. Mm -hmm. My next sentence was, we never got around to it. Guess what they cut out? That part. No. Of course they did. Yeah. But that means now. I'm the poster boy for pegging. You are the poster boy for pegging, because they still mm. air that episode. All the time. And I, I know when they air it, because I'll get a, a handful of, of followers and a handful of messages all about pegging and I have to break mm. the news to him all over again and it just it hurts my heart I don't want to be the bearer of bad news they're like oh did you ever let that that lady peg you I was like no where did you where did you get that notion from yeah, oh my yeah. god you're like they cut it they cut it my guys I swear not, to god not in this Christian mind press press <laughs> server no thank you so did it did it change anything in your life like did you no. 
No. No, I'll tell you the truth. I, I got, you know, a couple followers from it on social media. people that were able to follow me or find me. I got some text messages from my friends because I didn't tell them that I was going on there. They, they watched the show. Oops. Um, some of them text me like, hey, you came out across real nice. And other ones be like, what the fuck did I just see? And, and one friend's like, hey, why does that one hang so much lower? I was like, let's not ask these questions. <laughs> Can you not look at my balls I, so I, intently I, that I you am, know which one is hanging yeah, higher and lower? I'm almost 30. I'm allowed to have this. Thank you very much. Leave um, my balls alone. Yeah. Yeah, leave them alone. I don't want to. I don't have to have a thing. I don't think Freudian made up a phrase about ball insecurities. Not yeah. yet. <laughs> but yeah, that that was life. It was it was a fun experience. Though, yeah. You know? So it I have a question. Oh. Was what came first, the OnlyFans, or Naked Attraction? Uh, OnlyFans came first to to raise money for that charity. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and then you know, Naked Attraction happened, and there's a little bit of a, a a bump in sales and stuff like that. Mm. You know, as as it does. But I also got in contact with a lot of people who saw me from the show and they talked about how I wanted to do the animal sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, one of them is uh, Kate Powell, who is a a vegan activist, really big on on Twitter, really lovely human. She saw me from the show and then she's messaging me like, hey, nice butt, but let me help you with your dreams. Um, (laughs) And and so she's kind of walked me through a lot of the the community, the vegan community and, you know, the the activist side of it and how to word things better. Um, You know, some some really great reading material. And that would have never happened if I didn't just say yes to the dress yeah no for sure mm. uh, that that was always like one of my questions because i was like i wonder did, did he did he do it as a publicity thing for his only fans can i tell you the truth i i did it for love oh i know this sounds stupid but i believe in fate just a little bit you know oh sam and as as soon as as soon as i was going through a bit of a heartbreak i was i was kind of lost in like what my ideas and love was and i was like is this the universe pushing me towards like a really great event to mm. maybe meet that person that like I, I connect with that like I was meant to find, um, which sounds stupid to say, but I actually believed it. And and it's hard to convince people that I actually went on that show for love because that's not the show you go on for love, you know? That's no, it. but I could get why you would because I'd yeah. be exactly the same. But the thing is now that because they told me to say yeehaw. And oh no, they didn't. They did. Oh no. Now I'm in every opening credit going yeehaw, and like I was like, am I just this? Am I a joke to you? Am I a joke to you? Literally. <laughs> am I the drama? <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, I have to ask: Did you end up staying with the girl that you matched with? No, what no. Happened um, there? So she's a very private person. She asked that you know any kind of like communications that we had be kind of like kept between us, and I got to completely respect that um, mm-hmm. because people are always interested, be like, hey tell me about sex you have i'm like no i don't know you what the fuck are you talking that's about? a bit weird yeah Yeah, but you you understand more than anything on the internet how fast people can cross boundaries yeah definitely and i usually have the the philosophy if you would not walk up to me and say this to me on the street do not say it to me over the internet yeah that's right especially because i've seen your comment section sometimes yeah <laughs> especially when you're fucking you've fr- seen my dms i've seen you oh my oh my god i forgot about that yeah we've all seen that was a that was a wild Do night. Do we tell them about that? Oh, yeah. I mean, we can say. I was at a party. I got a DM of a guy's junk. Uh, it was junk. It wasn't even good. And um, I decided to show uh, Konzo. And uh, we just started replying to his dick pics with photos of us. I am a connoisseur of dick pics. But like laughing at it. Which, you know, that's somebody's kink. We might have made his night. That's the worst part. That's the part that upsets me. You did a favor. Because I might have actually helped them out. Because if they have a degradation kink. I thought you were talking about the tribute one that oh, someone did yes. over your fucking CD. Did they even have the plastic? That was the on? same. That was the same guy. That was the same guy. So sorry, I totally misremembered the the actual main part of it. So a tribute is where someone finishes on the the thing. So if it's an album or if it's a photograph, it's usually a photograph. It's usually yeah. a photograph. I've accidentally found ones online before as well, which was great. And don't Google your name, Jen. Don't Google it. Just Never. don't ever. Don't just don't do it to yourself. It's just pain. With it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he sent me a photo of that. And then I just sent photos of us back. Just kind of like laughing. We all had the same face, you know, just like like uh, a little bit of puckered. Like, uh, yeah. But the issue is if they're into degradation, then I've just, I could have charged money for that. Yeah. And that upsets me. So. That, that's quite upsetting. Yeah, right. I don't yeah. like that. Just don't go into your DMs requests, except for when getting requests for friendship so that yeah that like very leads us into why we became friends the best of friends the best of friends mm-hmm. uh was basically uh i made a tiktok saying that i wanted to become rich and famous solely for the reason that i wanted to start an animal sanctuary which is very true i would love to like help animals that would be a dream um and then 
you someone tagged you in the video multiple people tagged me in that video yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so then Conzo slides into my dms being it wasn't like, a slide it was more of a slither a little slither a little slither yeah you you got in there and um you wrote me this lovely just this lovely message mm -hmm. and we started chatting a bit and then you were like, like do you want to come to a party i remember that first message i was like hey yo bitch uh, like, <laughs> I, I know what the ladies like <laughs> no but i, I heard you want an animal sanctuary <laughs> yeah and i was like you know if i could just use your name in your image you don't have to do any work and i'll credit you um no but yeah it was it was it was kind of surreal to be on the same platform as someone that i've seen like years before that i like i liked your 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 work and whatnot and like i was like i know this person and then actually to be able to talk to you and then actually be like do you want to come to this party that's going on and then you'd be like yeah what you didn't tell me was your birthday party happy birthday me yeah um, thank you so much i was so embarrassed i didn't bring did, anything. did you really no one brought anything oh i would have brought you something no that would have been weird you don't know me. What have you brought me? Be like, like a little toy animal or something. That'd be cute. Animal Actually, farm. I regret that now. I yeah, see, I right? That. But it, was, it wasn't so much of my birthday. It's just I wanted to introduce you to everyone because I was like, sometimes I kind of get lonely vibes from you. And I was yeah, like, I know. My Instagram stories, they do yeah. give off sad, lonely woman. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? She, this person, this is my treasure, Janet. You may have this. This is my friends. Meet them. Enjoy yeah. them. And every single person by the end of the night was just madly like fawning over you. They're just like, Janice is the best person. Like she is so funny. She, oh. Your your energy was immaculate. Like you're cracking jokes like you knew us for years. And I've really, like when I first met you, because we met at the train station. And we did the running up wiggle hug? We did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I felt like I'd known you forever. It's such a weird vibe. Yeah. It's just. Catch a vibe. Catch a vibe. Like it just felt like I knew you. Yeah. And like I walked into that room and I was petrified because mm -hmm. ever you walk in and everyone's like Conzo wow mm -hmm. and I'm like and Janet <laughs> <laughs> hello but for the first time in my life actually after hanging out at that party I felt like I belonged somewhere mm. because everyone was a little bit weird wacky and wonderful yeah um and I think that's the best thing about internet friends is that yeah. once you exist on this platform this 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 fear sphere mm. there is no more judgmental there is no more cringe there is no more like you're really gonna do that? Are you really gonna wear that? It's all just hype. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's gonna be great. People are gonna love. Somebody that. could turn up dressed absolutely mental, and everyone would just be like, "Belle does. She does she every does. time. Every, and yeah. it, we're always like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, queen. <laughs> can I try on your shoes? Like, I mean, she does have the most impressive wardrobe I've ever seen in my life. Her wardrobe costs more than my house, so of course, yeah, yeah it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna be a bit. But yeah, that's what I love about these people, and that's why they're my treasure and my favorite things in the world. I and feel I'm, like we just skipped over the name Belle. I feel like we need to explain. Do you want to drop some names? You can drop some names. I Belle think she's Delphine. With, yeah. Like, uh, she's friends. We're friends. We're, We're all friends. friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, to people who don't know, she's, like, probably the most famous. But none of my friends seem to know who she is when I talk really? about her. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, just going to go uh, hang out with uh, all my friends. We're going to go have this uh, Halloween thing at uh, Bell's. And then everyone's like, who? I'm like, Bill Delphine. They're like, who I'm like, yeah, they don't, know. don't google her actually if you're part of the internet culture you'll know who she is she's mm. a pretty famous i don't want to say the p word she's but... she's a, a content creator in many facets she's also uh someone who's very good at marketing and she's very good at she marketing. trailblazed this entire thing and i'm very proud of her and i uh, i'm proud to be her friend mm. uh especially as much as she has grown and changed over these last couple of years as she's taken a step back from the internet to kind of like just have some peace because yeah. the, once you catch fire and you catch that that flame of, of fame, you burn out. Yeah. There's there's no stopping it. You cannot stay like that forever. That's why I like to sizzle. I'm the soup of people. Because um, I see I see her as like the the almost creator of popularizing the OnlyFans. Not only just the OnlyFans, but the, the Uwu Woo girl, the yeah, the whole aesthetic of e girl. Yeah. yeah. She is the the benchmark. Yeah, and you know that's that's something to give her a lot of credit for and. You know, there's a lot of things in the industry that people would be like, oh, I, I don't agree with this. But then again, it is highly done by many creators. And there's a lot of things in the industry that I'm not OK with as well. But I'm mm -hmm. not going to demonize the people who saw an industry, saw an opening and then made money for themselves off it. Yeah. Like, so you do OnlyFans. I do. I do. But what poorly. is OnlyFans? Um, so OnlyFans is a subscription-based website like Netflix, I'd say, where by subscribing to somebody, you have access to the content they hope to po they post. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, uh, ninety like fucking nine percent of OnlyFans is nudity, explicit content, pornography, um, mm -hmm. and I fall into that benchmark as well. And you know, because of OnlyFans, I'm able to chase this dream of opening up this animal sanctuary, and it's mm -hmm. just, it's 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 nice, it's amazing, I love it. 
So what kind of content do you do? Um, so where's your, where's your like limit lie? Oh, my limit lie. Well, it's tell you the truth. It's an expression of myself. It's mostly just me. I tell people do not, do not sub to me because you want, I don't know, hardcore porn. I'm not that, I'm not that guy. Pal. I'm not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't got the facilities for that big man. Um, <laughs> I do it to express who I am and I tell them more about my day to day life. It's, it's like another layer extra step to the Instagram, mm -hmm. like where I can tell you like, Hey, I'm not feeling so great about my body lately. I'm having struggles seeing myself naked or my depression's really hard lately, or I have a really big breakthrough for the charity, or this is the work that I'm doing. I'm helicopter dicking. Here's me jerking <laughs> off. There's, there's really no, and, and I, you're being genuine about the helicopter day. Oh, of course. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Yeah. And I used to put so much pressure on myself. I was like, these people are paying money to see, I must create all this content. Mm -hmm. But then I realized like that's dragging myself down. That's not who I am. I, I create what I want to create and I post what I want to post They're The only pressure that I was feeling was from me because my community is amazing. I can see. Yeah. The, I love your fans. My fans are the best fans and I'll fight any G uh, JD fans who want to say otherwise. Um, <laughs> Not physically, because that is uh, against the law. Yeah. But I will bully you online. And against your character. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, but I will bully you online. I will, <laughs> I'm not above bullying. <laughs> yeah, I'll call you a meatball. I don't know who you are, but you look like you're a fucking meatball. Yeah, uh, it's, that's really interesting for me. Because like, people don't see that side of OnlyFans. They only think of hardcore corn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, at, at one point, Patreon was a little bit like that as it well. It was. It yeah. was. Patreon used to be the place where people who did sex work would go to post their sex work. And then what did they do? They banned They it? do what they do all the time. Yeah. They kick they kick the plat the the people that made the platform the biggest. Because yeah. I'm on Patreon. I don't post <laughs> pornography. You're on Patreon. I have I Patreon. Bet you, I bet you have really great content on Patreon. Uh, thank you so much. I, I do have really great content I've on actually, Patreon. <laughs> I've, I've uh, subscribed to your Patreon uh, at the highest level as any real fan does. And it's absolutely amazing. And, thank you. And um, I think you get a mug. You do. You get gifts. Yeah. You get you get rewards for joining. I don't remember what the reward is right now. A mug we for do a mug? change them. Ah, true. We do change them up. So, yeah. Thank you for this, the, the little plug. But that wasn't Patreon, a plug. I'm, I'm not just a happy customer. But Patreon did start off being like a... Uh, it was a lot of porn. Yeah, well, that's what a lot of these websites do. They they build off their income and their notoriety through the work of sex work because sex work being the oldest labor in the in the world mm -hmm. will always go to where there's an opportunity. Um, and then you, they kick them off the platform as soon as they think they can survive without it. Or they We've want, seen it. Yeah, or they want to go more mainstream as in getting um, – more loans or stock options or blah 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 you have a very hard time doing that with sex workers on your platform yeah uh because there's so much stigma like i didn't realize that like banks and stuff won't take you if you're a sex banks worker. housing um there are many times that you can be denied for jobs opportunities it is a very illegal legal practice yeah uh, in the sense of how it is discriminated uh, discriminated against because of the stigma it's funny because when you think of sex work and the actual definition of sex work is uh paid work in the uh, sexualized industry comma comprising a porn or pornography uh, and you think about why does that comma have to be put there? Because there are so many jobs that would fall under that umbrella than advertising with the motto sex sells. Yeah, absolutely. How is that not sex work? How is, you know, these these industries that rely on turning you on to push a product? But you see work? it. You see it in music videos. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I'm not one to speak. I did a whole music video where I was painted gold and I was butt ass naked. Were you on the horse then? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Janet, Same will, one. Janet will always have an option to get a horse i don't know if you know this you can't see her now but she is wearing a horse t-shirt uh, and a riding <laughs> uh, what's that helmet on oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. what's it called and i've got uh, a riding crop yeah well i thought you just liked me a little bit what the? <laughs> yeah. although i did answer the door to the postman with that in my hand one day yes you did i did you very much did. oh my god and then the first time i i met uh uh janet like we said we met at the train station we're running to give each other a hug she galloped and neighed and I was yeah, like, yeah yeah you're like this is crazy what I is she like, doing maybe i should have invited her hey it's it's it, i'm an adult and i have a lot of guilt for being a horse girl like i feel as you should i feel so embarrassed as you should i know mm -hmm. but like i got picked on so much for it like and i get why not enough not enough <laughs> clearly not enough if i still do it you're still admitting it publicly <laughs> you're like how can i spend all this money on a horse for a music video yeah literally it was three horses actually songs about porcelain and other things <laughs> that we don't tell <laughs> and then you're like throwing a horse i love it should i tell them the real meaning of that song i 
as someone who I think it might, yeah, no, I think it will ruin it. Let's keep this, let's keep this a secret between yeah. us. I'm sorry, guys. Um, with a donation of a hundred dollars towards Konzo. Konzo <laughs> um, <laughs> is accepting bribes. Yeah, yeah. By 100%. the way, if you want to bribe him for the real meaning of better and I, one of the lyrics. But I like this little secret of ours. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I don't think I'd really told anybody that. Wow. Yeah, it was a big secret. We just feel so comfortable with I'm each other. I'm just so comfortable. <laughs> but so just not to, not to bring it back to the morbid but there was something that i picked up on that uh, like tickled my curiosity the fact that i'm sitting here crying right now yeah because you keep you've, you've me. cried the whole time <laughs> yeah i'm sobbing uncontrollably <laughs> the thing that i want to ask you about is actually your brother oh yes so your brother passed away uh yeah uh so when i was about 16 or so he was in the military he got the wrong medication um and he unfortunately took his own life you yeah. wow you know, these things, you know, when it comes to uh, America and they're heavily reliant on medication rather than, you know, getting to the root cause of things, these things happen, um, especially if someone's having issues in other categories. Um, but yeah, that, that was a, I think it was also kind of an eye opening event too when I was at his funeral and I, I couldn't cry. I just mm. couldn't. I tried. I saw him around me crying and I, I looked at myself and I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why am I? Yeah, what's wrong with me? Why aren't I mourning yeah, the same why, way everyone else is? Why am I numb? Why have I always been numb? And mm. that's when I started to question like if medication was the right course for me. Because I'd rather have these, these, and this is just in my personal experience, like this isn't going to be the right fit for everyone. If you're, you know, prescribed medication, there's probably a reason that you should continue seeing it and yeah. talk to your doctor about it. But for me, I was just, I'd rather have the highs and lows than feel nothing. I get you. No. Well, I can't take antidepressants now anyway. Yeah, well, you're on too much. I'm on I'm on so many meds right now. Yeah. It's ridiculous. She's shaking like a... She's shaking like a leaf. I was like... Constantly. When I, when I first said... When you first opened the door today, I was like, oh no, she's back on the hooch. <laughs> like she is... Yeah. <laughs> I'm addicted. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the rest of my life. Woody woo. But yeah, people don't know. I've literally... I've, ac- I've acquired the shakes uh, from the meds that I'm on, which mm-hmm. is great. It's not embarrassing whatsoever to be just like... Mm, jaw clenched. Vibrating with my jaw clenched because the, the meds make my jaw clench, but they're supposed to stop the shakes but they don't and it's, just i'm just a mess yeah i'm just an absolute nightmare how, how are you supposed to live laugh love like this yeah i can't live laugh love in these conditions well you could probably love pretty well if you're just laying there vibrating mm. i mean that sounds pretty nice that would <laughs> get someone off yeah there you go <laughs> and it's never you patriarchy <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh so you got this i got this yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. no i'm, I'm just i'm doing so good I'm just like curious still like do you think this is I think the reason why is because it's a hard question to ask um and I know from personal experience about it like do you think so your brother took his life Mm -hmm. do you think that planted the seed into yours that you can do the same no no the seed has been planted years ago I mean I when I I, when I first got on medications because I walked up to my teacher when I was 11 I told her I wanted to kill myself uh i and that's not something an 11 year old usually says they should have understood that there was deeper problems going on Mm. um yeah like what teacher just overlooks that like if an 11 year old came up to me and they're like i want to die i'd like well no they they sent me they sent me to the the principal's office and then my mom came in we had a nice sob in the office i remember these things and then she bought me diablo that was a good day (laughs) um Or did she buy me later after a therapy session? I don't remember. But anyway, uh, I remember the first time that I tried to take my life, uh, I tried to overdose on the Prozac because I was like, I, I've seen this. I've heard references towards this. Other times I would, I would hold my breath in the scorching hot bathtub as mm. long as I could until I like had to fight myself to get up. And I used to you know, self-harm a lot and I'd push it farther and farther. And so this has always been a thing in my head. But after seeing the reception at my brother's funeral, um, seeing how it was talked about in you know other people and family, and even how I felt about it a little bit, I was like, this might be an option. Mm. This might be a way to get out of the one thing that's really kind of holding you back, man. It's just like you are such a burden already on everyone in your life. Why burden them more? when you can uplift them now they have a a horror story to build that character now they have they have something from you you know that's more than what you were Mm. and it's looking back it's it's dramatic it's a dramatic very dramatic but it's a very serious thing though yeah but like it is dramatic yeah I'm, i'm glad everything played out the way it was and you know i'm glad that i've had these emotions and i've i've gone through these things so i can understand them a little bit better i'm 
I hate how long it took me to figure it all out. Mm. But I mean, it takes us all such a fucking long time. It's not an easy journey. No. And especially when you've got, like I hate to say it, but you've got a lot of big T trauma in your life. You think I'm big? You think I'm big? Oh my God. <laughs> That's like, why my arms are so big. 20, 25. Remember we agreed on 25. Yeah. That's why I store the trauma and the audacity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Literally all the trauma in the and audacity, audacity yeah, and yeah. the audacity. Can't forget mm. about that. In, yeah. the, in the pecs and mm. in the arms. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you do the booby dance, but I just move my shoulders, no, I, I think. <laughs> I can do it, but it freaks me out because obviously my girls aren't real and I can feel the implants move and it freaks me out and I don't like it. Oh my God. Yeah, that'd be weird. It's Yeah, it's gross. You'd hit yourself in the chin. You'd knock yourself <laughs> out. <laughs> like, how did she die? Titty on titty violence. Yeah. Titty on titty violence. <laughs> the worst kind of violence. Well, I say that, but they don't touch each other, so they can't even be violent. They're mad. They've been mad at each other for a They're long so time. They're so mad at each other. And this violence is about to erupt. Why are they living in different postcodes there's some tension in that bra you have said some funny ones today to me though uh i'm gonna keep those between us because that was a little bit oh of there the is blue. one of them though the grand canyon yeah oh <laughs> i was like you love america so much you brought the grand canyon back with you and i was like Conzo, are you a bully <laughs> why are people your friends it is so it is so funny though it was mm. over breakfast you know because like most girls when they lay lay back you know they experience the the boobs going to the side to side you experience that 24 7 you Dude, yeah literally actually they don't move when i lie down really they're so thick that they don't move oh my god it's like that one drugged out cat with the tongue out of the <laughs> 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 no it's honestly having fake boobs is one of the weirdest things ever do you feel better though uh, I feel like I look better in clothes mm. now. That's always well, nice. It means I can't wear as much clothes as I want to wear, though, mm. because like anything with a low neck that I used to love wearing. You're a wearing, slut, and I'm, you should get out of here. I should. People literally want to tell you to go die in a hole because you got oh, yeah. a bit of cleave how, showing. How dare you? Trying to corrupt the youth as a I don't know Call of Duty each other. Yeah, well, whatever. it's it's one of those things where it's like I want to get my money's worth. Of course. I'm still in my twenties. Yeah, you're looking good. I want to like get the girls out. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I don't understand the big deal. And as a high value alpha man, let me tell you, <laughs> this makes you the devil. It does. I've, According to those men, I have no self worth. I've only seen one pair of boobies in my life as my mother, and she never did nothing wrong <laughs> ever. But. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Wait, Do they make me feel better? This does mean a doctor's seen you naked. A doctor has seen me You're naked. You're never gonna find a husband. I'm now. never gonna get never. a husband. Ugh, he's feel... he's touched my boobies. <gasps> oh my goodness! Right to the gallows. I, I used to know. have my nip pierced as well, so someone else has touched my boobie. Um. I was about to say no, but then I remembered back then your nip was your entire boobie. It was like it a was, little bit. It was just a was puffy all, nip. That's <laughs> that all like... my boobs were. It was a little bit sad. Yeah, but you know you rocked it. You I the rocked thing. it. I enjoyed it. I do. I still. I always think now that people think I'm like anti small boobs or mm. something. I love small boobs. Well, so your rib condition that that yeah. you know, forced your hand in this. Do you think without the you know, if I didn't have the rib condition, I don't think I would have got it done though. Mm. I I wouldn't have been desperate to get it. It yeah. was just like any time I wore skin tight clothes. My my boobs, my ribs came out further yeah. than everything. And it was just a little bit like, it's you, you're trying to be sexy, but you can't do even. How do you come into your own you know, sexuality when you have this big insecurity? Mm. Like, because uh, you have to feel comfort, comfortable and confident. And like, yeah. And this is what a lot of people stress, you know, or uh, struggle with. And yeah. so if you found a way, uh, which is, you know, not hurting anyone else, you would think that it'd be okay for you to go down this road. But no, uh, apparently with the internet comments and the comments you get on your lives sometimes. Yeah, they're pretty grim. They're they're, they're grim, man. Yeah. How? Why? I don't know. Some people just treat me a bit like an object. But Who? you're not fine now. Oh, sometimes no. Sometimes. You're... God damn it. Uh, it's nice. I'm telling you. <laughs> if you can, be a straight passing white dude with a beard. It's quite, quite literally so nice. Because you're not straight, are you? I don't know what I am, to tell you the truth. I, yeah. I try to define my sexuality as it is what it is. It is what it, it is. It is what it is. I like who I like when I like them. And this has transcended genders. This has transcended many aspects that we try to categorize ourselves. And the more I realized that I was trying to put myself in these different boxes that I just didn't feel comfortable with. And mm -hmm. this made me question myself even more. And it, it threw me down this whole rabbit hole of like, who am I? What am I? Who, where do I fit in? Then I just realized like, I'm not meant to fit in because I am, I am me and I should just accept what I'm feeling, what I'm feeling, maybe explore these feelings when I'm feeling them and maybe, you know, do whatever. But, you know, I, I just feel like there's such internal conflict when you're trying to fit into these groups. And uh, I hate to see it with people mm. because they have to reevaluate and they have to, you know, label themselves as, you know, these other these other things and rather than just accepting who they are and being ha and just I don't know. It's, it's a weird one. Yeah, it's a tough one because I feel like in 20 years time, 
we're going to be at a place where you don't need labels mm. and you don't need to come out anymore. That's really cute. You think we have 20 more years on this earth? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> You're so naive. I, yeah, I know. God, I could... Fuck. <laughs> Let's to be so young and what, naive. What are we doing? <laughs> we should go see Ice White. It's still a thing. Yeah, exactly. Go visit the penguins while they're still living. Yeah, just shed a tear. Be like, man, I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, but I think in 20 years' time, you won't need, uh, you won't need to talk about your sexuality. I hope so. I hope so too. And you know, because I have, I identify as queer. Mm -hmm. Because it's the easiest one. I struggle to put myself in queer spaces because I know that my presence as I, you know, have presented myself my entire life because of everything that happened, I just assumed whatever default was around me and I became comfortable with that. To put myself in, in a queer space might make someone else feel uncomfortable because, you know, I, to the, I just look like a straight dude. Yeah, but that's not your fault. It's not, but at the same time, I have to be considerate. And No, you're very considerate as a person. Like, you, you do care a lot about others. As, as we all should. As we should, absolutely, yeah. but like not everyone's going to do that. Yeah, I know. You've been staring at your own picture on your book cover this entire time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've not taken my you, eyes off myself. You've not looked at me once. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been humbling. I appreciate the plug on the book as well. I yeah, yeah. Thank you. you wrote that entire book by yourself. I wrote that entire yourself. book, yeah. That was my first question. I was like, who ghost wrote this for you? It's brilliant. And you're like, no, I did it myself. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I was much. like, did you use that dragon talk to speech thing that I use? I'm dyslexic, so I have uh, to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Which is interesting, though, because I watched a TikTok of yours there the other day. Oh, um, where I was crying? Yeah, were you When crying? am I not crying? You don't cry a lot, though, I don't think. I cry I? a lot, to tell you the truth. Do you? Yeah, as I, I take pride in the fact that, like, as a, you know, 200, oh, sorry, uh, what's that? in 117 kilogram, you know, six foot on Tinder man with tattoos, <laughs> with, you know, looking as, as, you know, however they define masculine. I, I love to just have a wee cry, a wee sob. Yeah. Sometimes the day just gets too much for me and I'll just stop it like, I want to and then I'll move on. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I cry all the time. Say, so, that video really touched me though. So basically, you misspelled the word. Yeah, well, it's new. You just, you, you misspelled the word creator and you said creator, creator yeah. instead, mm -hmm. which. Why would anyone comment on that? Because firstly, you get the picture. You understand what the person is trying to convey. And not only that, you're not going to teach me anything. That years of special ed or my degree in biology, by the way, would not teach me. Yeah. Um, so scientifically speaking, fuck off a bit. <sighs> yeah, just go eat a bag of dicks. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you have to... I, I used to tell myself, like, if someone's trying to pull you down or make themselves feel bigger around you, it's because they see you as someone above them. Mm -hmm. But it still hurts because getting comments like that i didn't know why but like i got the red faced embarrassed i went to go delete the entire video and then i just remembered oh. like being this kid just like crying to my mom because i didn't want to go back to school i didn't want my special ed teacher to sit next to me i didn't want to use a laptop while everyone else was writing on pen and paper clacking away in a client quiet classroom sounds like your respect for yourself slowly going down the drain and i just couldn't do it i fake sick so often and my mom bless her heart she had to know she yeah. had to know. No one's sick three times a week. But she yeah. used to, we used to do this thing called mental health days. And we used to go to Super Salad, which is a restaurant. And it's soup or salad or super salad. I still don't know. It's out of business. Terrible business model. Um, it's a salad bar buffet. If that, okay. <laughs> yeah, did not stay in business for long. Um, and so we used to go do that. And, you know, as a single mom, she tried her best. Yeah. And I think because she was my role model growing up is that I feel so passionate about when I see people speak down, you know, to women or, or female presenting people or anyone just living their, trying their best, you know, I feel like personally attacked. Like, would you say this to my fucking mom? Yeah. And the, I shouldn't have to feel that connection to it to understand it's bad, but I do. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm more driven to bully the bullies, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what's fascinating is that you have dyslexia. But you got and a degree in biology. I actually have dyslexia and dysgraphia. Oh, uh, yes. Which dysgraphia is is the same to spelling as dyslexia is to reading um, to the point to where my spelling is horrendous. Um, mm. I misspell many things in my life. I mix up my vowels, my consonants, my everything. Um, and so at one point in life, I just had to sit down and realize, like, I'm not going to be able to read and write like everyone else does. Mm. And I was so tired of going to these therapy sessions and going to these special ed classes. And they're like, oh, you're doing so well despite. And I hate it. Mm. I, I grew to hate the word despite. Yeah. Like, it's just like you're doing the best you can for what you have. Like, mm, yeah. you're good job, Konzo. And, you know, and it kind of drives you a little bit to be more or do more. Yeah. Because rather than 
you know, despite this, it's in spite now. I'm doing it in spite, in spite of it. Yeah. yeah. I'm 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 raging. We have special ed in common though. Oh really? Yeah. They because I spoke Gaelic when I was a kid. Mm. Uh, instead of giving me any type of exam, because I went to private tuition outside of school, but instead of giving me any type of exam, they just went. You must be stupid. You're gonna be stupid because you don't need speaking. You don't speak English that well. Yeah. And I'm like, I speak English all the time when I'm at home. Yeah. Mom has me in a private tuition, like to do English. Mm. I read and write in English as well. Like, Why but you they just, just talk to me. They just ignored me, and like they hated my family. So, Why? So they just hated. It was small town Ireland mm. kind of politics kind of stuff. And uh, they put me in uh, in the year group, but I was like a year behind, even mm. maybe more than a year behind to them. Uh, and it, I not not it, it's the most embarrassing thing in the world. Yeah, people Can, don't understand what it's like to be like the special kid in class. They used to call me the specialist Ed, and this was during the day of Ed and Eddie. So like, <sighs> props were props to do good burn. But like yeah. to go with your peers and for them to only know that you're different. They don't understand the nuances of it. They don't no. understand like, oh. They're so. too young to get it. Yeah. Because you're partially too young to get it as well. Yeah. But they're, they're fucking old enough to make some sick ass jokes though. Yeah. <sighs> you go kids. Dude, I left, I left it pretty young. I think I left special ed kind of classes around like uh, eight years old, I think. Mm. And I just moved school and never, my mummy never told them. Yeah, I'd be like, no, we're fine. We're she fine. never said that mm. I was behind. So I remember just jumping into a class and just being like, overwhelmed mm. beyond belief that like these kids were doing multiplication and i was on addition yeah it was unbelievable yeah you are behind the curve and you know at some point you realize that they give you concessions as well for the fact that they just think you're fucking stupid they they see the 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 they just special... had to take a look at me yeah, yeah. <laughs> people like teachers see special ed and they see my special teacher that has to sit with me and like all these things and yeah. they just they don't ch they never challenge me i was never challenged um mm. Because they thought I was struggling with the the bare minimum, but I, like I understood concepts, I I could understand things. I loved history because all you need to do is remember things. Yeah. There was no writing or, or reading really involved. If you remember the dates and the places and the times and the and the reasons why, you're fine. Mm -hmm. But you know, some of my teachers would give me passes rather than grades. I didn't have to do anything. And, and, and towards high school, while I still stayed in in these these classes, I realized I could do. Um, community service rather than classes and they'd give me p's for passing i could take the same math class twice and they'd give me two math credits because oh, they wow. they're like this guy's stupid he's not gonna make anything of himself you know whatever just get him out of here no kid no child left behind means no one left behind even mm. if you're not trying and I, I i played the system i'm not gonna lie to myself i didn't see myself needing it in the afterlife <laughs> so i was like yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm just i'm gonna ditch class i'm gonna hang out with my friends i'm going to quietly sulk and not but do the you work still went on and you did get your degree you know yeah i mean out of my class i graduated like five from the bottom and that was that but still you fucking you did it which is that, impressive as hell then i got two one in university if anyone's questioning me here <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i'm smart i'm uh, smart i'm smart sometimes <laughs> who knows <laughs> but why the degree in biology though uh biology was my worst subject actually um by far i just never went to a single biology class but i wanted to be a veterinarian after doing a little bit of uh medical stuff in afghanistan working uh closely with um both the, the hospital in leatherneck uh, and also the the medics in our fob to do some surgeries that i should not have been allowed to touch mm -hmm. um i realized i have a passion for medicine i love the action of it i love you know the, the feeling of being able to do something successfully but i did not like people as much fair enough so i was like i would love to be a veterinarian that's a good dream i'd say yeah. get out of here um yeah so i went to I, I was like i need to understand science if i'm gonna be a veterinarian yeah. and luckily through it i actually think i found my calling with working in in charity rather than mm -hmm. being tied down to the business end of a of a veterinary clinic to profit and customer service and how much can we give for how much and how much can we skimp to save money and like it's just no i'd never want to look at someone and be like i don't have the resources to help you um yeah. my business model says i can't do this for free with a charity i can apply for grants i can have funding i can i can put more effort into it so mm -hmm. i can come back and said i tried all i could i'm sorry you know it is fascinating to me for the, the charity thing um like you literally sell photos of your dump truck D the Th dumpiest those butt cheeks dumpiest <laughs> we sell those and you are putting it towards a charity yeah it's 
I, but like, was I right in thinking that you were doing more with the charity to help adults as well, not just animals? Yeah. So actually, this is how the idea evolves over time. So in my original idea, I was like, okay, I'm going to do, you know, this charity for animals. And then I met someone else and they're like, have you thought about like how to help the community? I was like, oh, why? And they're like, there's no funding for animals. I'm like, you're right. Working for that last charity, I realized like I could not get funding for food, for vets, for cost of living for animals. Mm. The money's not there. Um, and then realizing that the atmosphere that these animals create would be really good for education. It'd be really good for to help local schools for kids like me who struggled going to school and hated every second of it to have a place that maybe you realized, oh, just because you're not excelling in these things doesn't mean you're worthless. Like, yeah. you know, you're, you're so you're so amazing at different things or what you actually care about. Uh, and then also for job opportunities, the the town of Fife, uh, especially uh, Kokodi and West Weems mm -hmm. is deprived. They need they need work. They need to end generation poverty. And sometimes the best way to do that is employment and mm. meaningful employment. And by being able to be like, okay, if you run this hospitality sector of the charity, I can put down on your resume as a reference as well, you know, hospitality management. So you're no longer the clerk. You can now apply for, you know, management positions. Mm -hmm. And while it's a small step, it's a step. It's a massive step. Yeah. And I would be able to help actual people. And that sounds amazing, you know? Yeah. And I remember you mentioned about addicts as well. Yeah, definitely. Especially when it comes to like the, the second chance at life. Yeah. When, when you have these smears on your records or these, these, you know, what people would perceive as a moral deficit, which it is not, there's, it's so hard to crawl your way back from that. And mm -hmm. to be able to like lend a name and to be able to give purpose to be like, okay, look, you no longer have this gap in your CV. I'm here for you. Like, mm. I'll, I'll fucking lie for you. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not above saying that. Oh, wait, are you gonna air this? Yeah, oh, we're gonna shit. air this. Don't uh, say that. <laughs> I've never lied in my entire life. Um, no, and I would love to be in the 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 place to be able to give people a second chance. Not only you know kids with the generation poverty, not only adults who are struggling to find employment, not only you know people who have, who have dealt with addiction problems, but mm. anyone that I can I can get my hands on. If I can help, I want to help. Yeah. And it, it sounds a lot bigger than it is, but I'm sure I will only be able to help a few people. But if I'm able to help them, then I've changed their worlds. And like that, that's enough. That's a pretty big deal. That's enough for me. Even one person. Yeah. It's a massive thing. Mm -hmm. that's so the goal. I think it's it's a really, it's something I've never heard before. I've never heard of somebody starting an OnlyFans to fund a charity. Uh, it's, it's. Apart it's from a, that girl in Australia. Who did the wildfires. Wildfires. Sold yeah. her nudes for the wildfires. Yeah. That was a emotional roller coaster that she went through. Yeah, dude. Yeah. She didn't think much was going to happen of it, and it just blew the frick up. When I say fame burns out quick and it, it takes you does. with it, I'm not joking. Yeah. There's not a single person who's caught fire who's maintained in the limelight. If you were, uh, you know, propelled. You got to hope for like a slow burn in. We're the soup of people. Yeah. Leave me simmering, baby. I'll fucking yeah. add some tomatoes and shit. Like I'm tasty. Yeah. Like it's that. It's that almost like what's perceived as overnight mm -hmm. fame. Yeah. Uh, is is it's a harmful. killer. Yeah. yeah. Could you imagine at you know sixteen seventeen if you were catapulted into superstardom like you are? I kind of felt a miniature version of it. And it did it hurt? It was weird, dude. Mm -hmm. I went from like nobody in my school knowing who I was because I was too shy and a weird kid. Just, uh, still a weird still, adult. Still a weird adult. Yeah, I haven't grown <laughs> out of we it. We love you it's for not it. Just never, a phase, mom. Never change. No. Uh, like I went from overnight, like, nobody knowing who I was. I was just the weird kid. And then being on the front page of all the papers mm -hmm. and being on the television and, and having journalists blowing up the phone flat. And I was like, what, what the hell? And once everyone wants to know what you're doing, small human... You know, defects, normal human quirks yeah. become big, seething stories. Yeah. Everyone wants to know who you're dating, why why it ended. Everyone wants to know what you're doing, what, what you've said. And you're no longer given that human grace that, yeah. you know, we all give to each other. Like, oh, I've, I've said something that I did not intend for it to be taken that way, but mm -hmm. intention versus perception, you know, I have to apologize for it. Now it's you're tough. now you're the worst person in the world. We were talking about that earlier, like what it's like to be a person online mm -hmm. and trying to balance that. Like, what can I say? What can't I say? Yeah. What you accidentally say mm -hmm. that is offensive and yeah. harmful. Yeah, I, I admitted I admitted to you like when I was in high school and like in the military, I used the R slur. Yeah. I dropped it and and anytime I was like, Oh, that's you know, that's ridiculous. I'd I'd use the uh the R slur and I was now growing up I realized like that's that's just not the right thing to do. Mm. And, you know, 
I don't want to hide from the fact that, yeah, I've said this because that doesn't show the growth because no one's perfect. And we need to give people that space to grow while also holding them accountable, but also realizing we're humans. Like, and just because you don't see the effect of your one comment, be like, you're the worst team in the world, doesn't mean you're not adding to the, the thousands. Yeah. And you, you, just because someone's on your phone, just because someone's on your television, just because they're on your newspaper, doesn't make them holier than thou. If anything, no, it makes them just people. It makes them a little bit weirder. Yeah. <laughs> it makes like who wants that? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I fi I find it like it's so hard. Like because you can accidentally just say something so simple. Like mm -hmm. you say woman, and you should have said feminine presenting because mm -hmm. we talked about that one earlier it's like oh woman feminism feminine presenting because it's an issue that affects those who present femininely yeah. and not just those exclusively who have a vagina and here's the question i've i've been trying to answer myself and why i use just like non-gender terms as much as i can is because when i say uh, man or woman i'm including trans people in this i'm including, yeah same you know, so men women non-binary people i'm i don't want to add the extra and trans people because that's just one more step away from it yeah it feels like excluding them even further yeah so how do you say like you're included without excluding yeah. it's these these questions that are, are hard for people without pr teams without people to draft messages yeah. who are just trying their best with their fucking celly phone yeah uh, but unfortunately we are seeing next to celebrities who are real they have the teams to craft these messages and they're still fucking up they have media training yeah it must be nice yeah i mean i went to it once did you yeah you should have said that. But like, apparently hey. I didn't say enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got told off. I didn't say enough. So I... That's happening I think a lot in your life, isn't it? I think, yeah. <laughs> but I think that's cha that changed me. Yeah. That moment where they were like, no, you need to share more. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you've just given the green flag for the rest of my career. Open up these fucking <laughs> floodgates. You've opened the floodgates and now I never shut up now and, about my life. And look what happened. You are incredibly <laughs> lovable on TikTok. You're very I'm not, sweet. I'm not here to blow smoke up your ass. Yeah, please don't. Uh, that's not what the podcast is for. Yeah, that's afterwards. <laughs> High five. Um, no, but like you are... Uh, people can relate to you and like we were talking about how in your comment sections people are like thank you for talking about this yeah like, i have this and to see someone who i look up to or i see as like an actual celebrity talking about this makes me feel less alone more normal more maybe like i could do whatever the fuck i want and just because i have this diagnosis isn't going to stop me from that yeah for real that's why people fucking love you because you're I... over here and be like my tits never looked eye to eye yeah, i literally do say that on tiktok yeah. i know my content is unhinged yeah i just never change never change no because it's when people ask what gets you fame what gets you you know people's attention it's being yourself i think and i said to you earlier i preferred it whenever my account didn't have a blue tick oh yeah because then people didn't take me seriously they and should I, probably still not take you they seriously. they shouldn't take what me seriously I, say that I was don't, looking at this one don't don't do it friends just don't take me seriously i really think it's a really bad idea because all i am is a person just trying to make music mm -hmm. that's it just a person doing their best. Yeah. And I'm proud of you. I and appreciate that. All our friends are very proud of you. And Aww. you're so incredibly easy to love, um, which causes me to fly down all the way from Scotland to be on this thing. Drop of the hat. I appreciate it. Like, we really need to appreciate uh, Konzo coming down and being a part of the podcast today. And I just want to say thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me into your world. But before you go, before we go, because we're going to Brighton, we're going out. Okay. Okay, I'm going on a night out. Oh, yeah. So I'm very excited. She's going to put on the nicest. Uh, oh, can we wear matching dresses? I'm going to wear a dress. To hide the food bellies. Yeah. Oh, I, I have to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not wearing these jeans. These jeans are very unflattering. I, I am butting my pants every time I sit down. I have a pillow in front of me. <laughs> I ain't got trousers on, actually. They come out to my knees. <laughs> no, but it's honestly, it's been such a pleasure to have you on. Like, And just for your vulnerability and just for opening up about everything that you've opened up about. I really appreciate it. I hope people can see why I love Conzo so much as a person um you're almost i have to say this you're almost so nice that i i was afraid at the start where that's i was what, like, that's what josh said as well yeah i was like nah this guy's too nice josh like uh, two months after we became friends he was like when i first met you i hated you because i thought you were just like no one's this nice yeah. i was like i'm not nice i'm just goofy and but you are that nice it's it's easy when you you're, you love your people and stuff like it's not it's not hard not to be nice was it? To some people, it seems like it is. It's easier to be nice <laughs> than it is to be hateful. It's easier yeah. to hype people up than leave a hate comment. Yeah, but you are is genuinely one of the nicest people I've ever met in all my life, and I need to make that clear. And I hope you guys have loved talking to Konzo as much as I've loved talking to Konzo. It's been great. So just but before time. you go, social media plugs. 
Oh, um, don't follow me. I don't, I don't want you. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> If you made it this far and you're watching on the YouTube machine, then don't forget to give the subscription button a hug and the notification bell a wee tickle too. And if you're feeling extra generous, give us a wee thumbs up. Oh, and go leave me a positive review on any and all the podcast apps. Those five-star reviews help us reach more people who want to know what the crack is. And don't forget to sign up to my Patreon because if you want to watch the episodes a day early, have access to all exclusive content and much, much more, then there's where the true crack is. Have a happy day.